Hello YouTube gamers, welcome to the inaugural episode of Video Game Law and Politics. My name is Pedro and we have a very interesting case to start off this show with. Introversion just received a letter from the British Red Cross organization who is claiming that they are not allowed to use the very generic, very popular Red Cross symbol uh, as to denote health in their very popular video game. Uh, Prison Architect. Um, for those of you who don't know, like me, who had to actually research it because I haven't played Prison Architect before, Prison Architect, it's a top-down 2D uh, game where you are, in essence, in control of the prisoners. It's kind of like, the way I saw it, it's kind of like uh, uh, The Sims, but you are the warden or something like that. I could be wrong, but that's the that's the, the impression it gave me. But the real issue here is the Geneva Red Cross, right? So here's a picture of the the Red Cross. It's just a very generic symbol. You've seen it everywhere. You've seen it in in uh, hospitals. You've seen it uh, pretty much all over the world. And it's not the first time that video games have used this symbol. Uh, Halo, um, Halo One had the symbol, and it has its health pack. Uh, they later quietly changed it. If you look now, Halo now uses an H symbol to denote health. But uh, not just Halo. Um, I think Half Life also had this symbol and and um, with no problems and now it seems kind of weird that they're gonna start claiming that this symbol is protected under the Geneva Convention. Now for those of you unfamiliar with the Gene Geneva Convention, um, it's, it, the United States is a, uh, did sign it, we are part of the Geneva Convention, uh, but we, but Congress never ratified it. So it's kind of iffy what, um, what things we have to comply with the Geneva Convention, for instance with Tom Guantanamo. Uh, the whole controversy between uh, whether we should close it, you know, we're violating the Geneva Convention by ho having Guantanamo open, but we still have to close it, right? So, there's that. Now, um, this isn't the first time that this Red Cross has come, uh, you know, has been challenged. Uh, in 2006, when uh, there was another controversy, same same thing, Red Cross organization was complaining about the, the symbol being used in a, in a different game. But in that controversy, they really relied on trademark law. Now, um, the trademark law, th that's a different story. Because for here, in Prison Architect, we're looking at the Geneva Convention. There's some kind of a violation there with the Geneva Convention. But if you look at it at pure trademark law, you know, you want to see, is this a valid trademark? And th the answer to that is pretty, you know, it hasn't gone to court. You have to go to court to really decide. But it's really clear to me that it's not a valid trademark. It's too generic. You see, um, trademark law requires a certain level of distinctiveness for its marks. It can't be, it can't be a, a, a generic thing. It can't be descriptive. It can be suggestive, but you need secondary meaning. You need a connection between the symbol or the mark itself and the consumer, and that that mark makes an association between the product and the consumer. So when you see the Nike swoosh, you think, oh, that's not just a swoosh little thing. That's actually connected to Nike. You just look at it and you say, oh, that's Nike, because you have that connection in your mind. Now, you see this red cross and you're thinking, well, have you made the association with the red cross? And the answer to that is maybe 30, 40 years ago, you might have think, thought, okay, this red cross means the red cross organization or anything. But it now it's just a very generic symbol that means health. I mean, in video games, it's a generic symbol that means health. In hospital context, it's a generic symbol that means health. And what the British um, are saying is that, you know, we're not arguing trademark law. They're, they, they've given up on that. They did try to argue it back in, in 2006, according to this blog post. Uh, but in uh, now we're looking at 2017. They're arguing a, a Geneva Convention violation as, uh, because of, of the use. And it's a separate area of law. And uh, I'm not as familiar with international law as I would be about trademark law, but it seems like uh, it, it's it's misplaced. The Geneva Convention was more about war crimes, you know, and uh, you know the the law does spe specifically say you know this this cross has to be used for prisoners of war. It has a certain it has a certain spe specified use, and they're claiming that you know if we start letting it go, if we start letting it be used everywhere, then it's going to dilute the importance of the mark. And so when we need it, and I, I, okay, I can, I can understand that they want to use it for, oh, when we need it, we need it, right? But that's, that's the, um, that's the issue here. And in, in my opinion, it's, there are certain uses that have already been allowed. They're not, 
they're not suing hospitals or writing letters uh, correction they're not suing anybody right now but they're not writing letters to hospitals they're not writing letters to i don't know novelists for writing for using the the image in maybe a, a health book uh they're not suing a uh, doctor for having the mark on his website uh and all of these uses are not consistent with some kind of a wartime use so um it seems like they're cherry picking it they in 2006 they tried using trademark law to go after video games and now it seems like they're using geneva convention law to go after uh go after video games again and to be honest i think i mean video games have been trying to comply they're going to start using green marks in the video games uh so that's that's the the story and this is my first uh, episode of uh video game uh, law and politics. I might end up changing the name to something else because, I, like I said, this is my first time here on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. And I hope you comment. And I hope you subscribe because, as as far as I know, I have zero subscribers. So if you're listening to this, thank you very much for listening to the whole thing. Uh, if you uh, if there's some mistake I made or uh, mistakes in law, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I will probably make a correction video one day. Uh, you know, like oh, this is wrong or something like that. My, my bloopers. In any case, thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Pedro. Uh, welcome to Video Game Law and Politics. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.